everyone wants to be a millionaire whether they want to admit it or not some people say they only want to make six figures a year they just want to be comfortable the truth is the idea to everybody of becoming a millionaire not having any stress of handling their personal finances is a dream for everybody especially in this day and age with all the entrepreneurship going on on social media everyone wants to be an entrepreneur wants to be a millionaire they want some sort of success financially Today, we're going to be talking about three habits. They might be different. Maybe we'll, you know, connect. Maybe one of my habits is the same as Kirby's, but we're going to be talking about three different habits of becoming a millionaire. But Kirby, I'll let you start this one off with the first habit. Yeah, Alex, yeah, Alex I love the intro. Um, three habits to be a millionaire. And I'm going to go, first, I'm going to go to what you said. Everybody say that they don't want it. And, and to me, honestly, it's, People saying they don't want it because they don't think it's achievable. You know, you hear you hear the older folks. I don't I don't want to be a millionaire. I want to be comfortable. So let me give a news flash to everybody. To be comfortable in the United States with the cost of everything these days, you need to be at least a millionaire. The goal should be striving to get there. Um, but now I'm gonna hit you with my first habit, and it's really not a habit. It's an understanding. And I seen this, and actually a gentleman sent this to me maybe three or four days ago. Most people ideal of what a millionaire is and why they want to be a millionaire or why they want to be wealthy or why they want to be rich or why they want to be comfortable is not the fact of security. They want it so they can spend more money. So that is the big hindrance. It's a it's a huge difference between it want to spend a lot of money and want to be a millionaire so your family is taken care of everywhere in the world and alex you hear me talk about it all the time it don't matter how much money you make the world has a application an appliance or somewhere where you can consume something where you can go broke the purpose of becoming rich wealthy comfortable as people say should be so you don't have to deal with living your life the same way you live now, maybe up and at a level, but being at a place where you're not worried about how the light bill is going to be paid, how the gas bill is going to be paid, you know, having the ability to maybe take a vacation once or twice a year. It's not what you see on social media of, hey, go buy a Lamborghini, go, go, go get on a yacht, hey, uh, go get on private jets. That's not the purpose. And I guarantee people, if the reason why they wanted to become a millionaire was more for comfort, more for security, than to just spend, it'll be a lot more people achieving it. But most people think that, oh, I just got to keep spending, spending, spending until I, I can just have the ability to spend a million dollars and there's no problem. Those people never get there. So the habit that they're missing is the understanding of why they want it. Most people that want to go because they want to spend a lot of money, they never make it. But the people that achieve it is people that just want the comfort level. And then once they're comfortable, they're just doing it for sport, not for, hey, I want to go do something extra. So that's the first one of it is understanding why you want to have that. The re Your reason why is one habit for becoming a millionaire. I think my first one goes hand in hand with this one, which is live on less than you make. Um, I think that's crucial to actually reaching that net worth of a million um, because the more that in you increase your lifestyle, I mean, it's just simple math. The more you increase your lifestyle, you are pulling away from your income. And so you don't have enough money to grow your net worth or grow your wealth. So all of your expenses are just expenses. They're not investments. They're not you know, going into stocks or real estate or something that's going to grow your money. It's all just going out the window. So living on less than you make is crucial. We've said it so many times. You guys have probably heard it on other channels. It's a very important rule to actually scaling your wealth and your net worth. Um, so I like that one. Uh, I'm going with my number two is I'm going to use you as, as an example. Most people believe that, oh, the way you become a millionaire is by, oh, you, know, you need a six-figure, seven-figure job. Oh, you need to have a trust run from your parents. Um, and I've talked to thousands of thousands of people, 
about this subject and I've tried to assist thousands and thousands of people to get there. Uh, and we have with this channel also, but just personally talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. And Alex, I'm using you as an example is because people, people probably think, first off, let's get this out the way already. And then that, Alex, I know you're gonna, it's gonna shock you that I'm gonna say this, but let's get this out of the way. Everybody think Alex here is some white kid from the suburbs. That's far from the truth. Alex is Puerto Rican. Hell, he's probably more blacker than me. <laughs> and Alex didn't come from, he didn't have a silver spoon. He didn't have a brown spoon. Hell, he probably got a stick for life. <laughs> that's, that's the truth of it is. He started with nothing. Literally with nothing. And everybody has this idea of the only way you can get there is if you, if you had a great grandfather or mom or something that gave you something. Alex told the story millions of times. It, he started with nothing. He didn't want to be a prisoner to the nine to five job. He wanted to work a nine to five job, but he didn't want to have to go there every day. If he didn't have to, he didn't want to be a slave to the system. Alex started with nothing and then he created from nothing. Alex and Alex, you correct me if I'm wrong. From a nine to five job, you never made a hundred thousand. I I think maybe the max that you made from a W two job maybe is 60, 70, 80. Am I close? Sixty, yeah. 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 When when I when I met Alex, Alex had ten thousand dollars, a pack of bubble gum, and that was it. That's it. And he saved he saved the ten thousand dollars from the you know the job that he worked. And then he kept grinding and he kept focusing on what the goal was. The goal was, and his biggest fear was seeing his parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and everybody else, you know, work, work, work. They're miserable and they got to keep work, 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 working just to survive. Instead of taking his money to go consume, he took his money to go invest and buy assets. So the thing, the, my number two here is, and sorry, Alex, I had to call you out on all this, is it's not where you start. It's not how much money you you have or the income that you have. It's what you do with the money. Understanding that going out to the clubs, going out to eat all the time, going out to make, to appease everybody else, that's what hinders everybody. I remember Alex, when I met him, he was like, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I, I just want to live the dream everybody else want to live. I want to be able to travel. I said, well, go travel. Don't don't wait till you're 60 old and on a cane because then you're screwed. You ain't better enjoy it. You use your money, whatever money that is, to buy assets that will keep generating money. So my number two is people don't understand what to do with the money that they have. If you use the money that you have to buy assets, and I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you got to go buy 10,000 shares of Apple or 10,000 10, rental properties. Do it slowly but surely. The key is don't use your income to entertain yourself. Use as much income as you can besides the four walls in your house, and hopefully the four walls in your house don't cost a lot to buy assets that will pass off cash flow. And if you do that for a while, sacrifice the instant gratification and you keep buying assets that will keep passing off income, you only got to do that once. So that income will keep generating. So now Alex, Alex traveled 50 times more than me. He over there in, in different countries, he cruising, he doing every damn thing. But he didn't have make six, seven, eight figures a year. He just used all his income to keep buying assets. And the assets are going to keep generate revenue for him to enjoy his life. So most people use their money. They work to entertain themselves instead of work to buy assets. So everybody else can work to entertain them. So just change the philosophy around. Your money shouldn't go towards you. It should go towards assets. And then everybody else is going to work to make those assets higher. And then they're going to pass you money. And then you live off that because people are going to keep working. 
But everybody ain't got to work to entertain themselves. So I know that was long and drawn out, but I just had to get that off my chest. Yeah, I like that one. My number two is controlling your emotions. Uh, this is one that I had to learn, and I'm glad that I tried to apply myself to learn it early on when you had mentioned it to me. Because controlling your emotions goes very far and investing um, through all kinds of emotions, fear, greed, happiness, all that. Because especially in times where, you know, it's normal for people to react emotionally in the sense of where they get happy when they make money or whatever. But reacting that way can lead you to a bad path. It could lead you to overreacting with your happiness and spending your money or whatever. Uh, controlling your emotions in the sense of fear is a huge one too. A lot of people get scared to take a risk to just jump. And it's normal. I think it's human instinct to want to protect yourself. So you tell yourself not to make that first step or take that step or do this or that. But that only holds you back because you then lack the experience of what would have happened if you took that step. You don't know. So if you never take the step, you don't know if it would have came out good, if it would have came out bad. You're just thinking and overthinking that it would have came out bad and you never learn, you never get to experience that action um, and to see the benefits from it. And, you know, controlling your emotions and all those aspects, just not getting too afraid when you see your money dropping in the stock market. Uh, things like that because in reality you know the best times to actually be buying is when this, when the stock market is going down when any market is going down whatever market you're investing in so in all aspects controlling your emotions right and then my third one is going to tie in your last one alex is controlling your emotions that that's perfect um the last one for me is People that live a comfortable life, the people that are true <clears throat> millionaires, that's true, that's true people that live in a level of comfort. They're not afraid to take risk. And it's only called risk from the people that's naive. The people that don't know no better. The people that go stand in, go stand in the line and buy lottery tickets. You know, I hear all the time, the stock market is risky. Buying rental properties is risky. Tenant, tenants tear up your property. All the nine. The thing is, is for people to get to those levels, they took some sum of what people quote unquote risk. And then the only thing you see is, I mean, most people see it as risk, but they don't understand the nuance, the background and everything that they do to get into it. Like we get on this channel, and you see other channels and people talk about stocks. They talk about real estate. We don't just wake up every morning and just say, oh, well, let's just buy real estate with no information. It's to study and understand what you're doing. It's not a risk when you understand it. It's the same as when your kid goes to college. Hopefully parents are guiding them through the process of getting something that's applicable that will make money. So you never hear nobody say, Oh, I'm going to take out a hundred thousand dollars student loan to go to college. Nobody going to say, Oh, that's a risk, but they say, Oh yeah, you're going to study and you're going to understand and you're going to be an SME or subject matter expert in an area that's going to get you a well-paying job. So what's wrong with somebody studying the stock market, reading books, gaining knowledge about the stock market, and then they putting their money into a place that is known to produce a good return on capital a good return on investment it's the same thing it's not a risk when you study it the thing that people don't understand is the people that's in these different realms and different levels of investment it's more than just sitting here talking on youtube it's sitting here i remember me and alex we used to sit there on eight hour seminars on the saturday listen to seminars from lawyers and stuff like that about different investment uh, avenues. Listen to CPAs talking about the tax returns they do for people that have money and what the people with money are doing. Literally scouring the MLS, running the numbers and actually buying it. It's not a risk when you have the knowledge of what's going on. But people want 
People want the, the microwave society of, hey, I want to buy real estate. I just go out and buy it. They don't want to study or nothing. So, yeah, it's a risk when you don't know what the hell you're doing. But the people that's living comfortably, they study the subject matters or the investment opportunities they're in. They ain't just wake up one day and say, oh, I want to do it. They studied how to do it, how to be proficient at it, how to be efficient at it to make it better for them and their families. So a big aspect that the lower middle class, the middle class, and the poor don't understand is you have to keep on learning. I'm not a big proponent on school, but the continuation of learning is paramount. I don't care where you get the knowledge from, but the continuation of learning is paramount if you want to be there. Everybody always... When I have these conversations with people, oh, I just had more money. And I always ask them, if I hand you a million dollars, what you would do? Oh, I'll invest it. Invest it where? I don't know. Exactly. So just like the athletes, just like the actors and all these superstars that get a handful of money, you're going to get a whole bunch of money. You're not going to invest a damn thing. You're probably going to trust somebody to do it and get screwed over. But you don't, you don't want to gain the knowledge that it takes to get there. So my number three is... If you want to get there, you have to study what people with money do. Once you find out an avenue that you say that's in your wheelhouse, you have to study that subject matter so you're comfortable with it. You understand the nuances of it. Like Alex, when he started, when we started thinking about real estate, Alex probably had the same stories I had. Oh, rental properties suck. These tenants only tear up the properties. Uh, I ain't met somebody that did real estate that made a lot of money. But once he studied it and understood it, then he saw, oh, I have to I have to pay and do great deals. I have to work harder and make sure I'm getting in deals that will be beneficial to me. Not just randomly going out there, just buying property, saying, oh, I'm going to call it a rental. The knowledge behind it is what makes wealth. Not just randomly just throwing money against a wall and thinking that it's going to stick. So that's my number three, Alex. Sorry for running on. I like that one. I really do, especially when you talk about, you know, that last point on picking rental properties and stuff and people saying that rental properties is a bad thing. But it, it's only bad if you make the bad decisions. If you buy a property that is in terrible condition, if you buy a property with a bad tenant in it, if you put a tenant in it. And the most common one I hear is people buying properties and putting their family in it. That is like the most stressful situation to put yourself into as a landlord. But my third and last one is um, never give up. Uh, this one, I think, is crucial. Um, yes. I've been seeing some quotes and short clips and stuff on this uh, recently. And the best way that I've heard it explained, which is so true, is if you simply just never give up, you may not accomplish what you want to accomplish the way you want to accomplish it, but you will accomplish it somehow, you know, like, because you're consistently taking action. You're not, because if you just give up, you just give up and you fail because you chose to give up. But if you keep going, eventually you're going to achieve what you're going after. And it might not be easy. It may be very difficult and uncomfortable, but it is necessary in order to reach your goals. Alex, I, I know we're running over, but I'm just going to give them examples of your last one. Your last one is perfect. Contrary to what's shown on social media, even on this channel, we not betting a thousand. We not betting a thousand in the stock market, in the real estate market, in any avenue we go in, we're not betting a thousand. What I mean by that is not everything we touch turn to gold. I mean, me, I have more headaches than, than most because I'm teaching myself, learning myself. Alex, even with me, trying to guide him through it, he's made mistakes also. In the stock market, in the real estate market, in business, mistakes happen. I mean, if I, from the failures that I had, I, I think my first 15 ventures into trying to make more money, they all failed. And I just kept grinding, kept grinding, kept grinding. We don't even want to get into stocks. Stocks, I was penny stock master. I'm losing money left, right, around. I'm losing my money and my future money, I was that's how much I was losing in the stock market. But I just kept grinding, kept getting the education. Uh, again, every stock that we buy, I, I see it all the time. People, you know, put $500 in a stock and then they don't do nothing. Oh, no, I'm not doing it no more. If you just keep going, and the thing is, keep going don't mean, oh, I bought a stock. It was terrible. I'm just using stocks, for example. But the same thing with any investment. 
I did. I bought a stock. It didn't work out. It was terrible. I'm not ever doing it again. Instead of, I bought a stock. It didn't work out. Hey, let me study what I did wrong. Let's not repeat that same thing again. Let me, should I do more research on the company? Should I sit there and study the earnings call? Should I read the transcripts from the, uh, the investor conference? All those nuances that go on, that's what should be going on. But most people just quit after the person death. You got to keep going, keep going, keep going. Again, batting a thousand, I'm I'm like MLB. I'm batting like about a 285. But the thing is, that 285 that I'm batting, it superseded all the mess ups that I made before. Just using the baseball analogy there. I mean, just think, people going to the Hall of Fame batting three, 300. That means 70% of the time, they missed. But the 30% of the time that they hit, got them to the Hall of Fame. That's the same thing it is with investing. You got to keep getting up to that plate and swinging. Don't let the bat sit on your shoulder. But the thing is, is when you're missing, you need to study what you're doing wrong. And once you study what you're doing wrong, once you have an understanding of what you're doing wrong, where you need to improve, that's why I continue learning, keep going in there. That's what gets you to the 300. That's what gets you to the Hall of Fame. And the Hall of Fame for every individual person should be safety, security of their family and not sitting there worried about, oh, how I'm gonna pay the next bill. I just just yesterday, uh my and I and I'll tell my wife, she'll see the video, but my my wife picked up my kid from school and and then I didn't know my son was the one that was texting me and they said, Oh, we're gonna get pedicures. Now before before my son was born, and then me or my wife said we was going somewhere, and I mean back in our poor super poor days, they said we're going to do something. I'm over here writing down like, oh my God, how can we afford this? But it was just the simple fact that I'm saying, hey, we're going to do this. And I didn't even have to look at, oh, okay, see you later. I'll see y'all when y'all get back. You know, just having the ability to say, okay, you could do that without going, you know, going into a flux and seeing, oh, well, I'm going to have to move money from here to there so they can go do that. That is the, that's the key to, you know, being comfortable, being successful is, the ability so your family can do something and everybody's not in panic mode. So I know we ran a little long, but I just had to hit those nuances that you put out there, Alex. But those are good points. With all that being said, guys, if you have any comments or questions, let us know down below. Share this video. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and we will see you guys on the next one.